Good morning, my Real News Media TV family. Thank you so much for tuning in this morning, and I'm wishing for everyone a wonderful and a productive day. And in the news this morning, St. Catherine Senior Simpson missing. 76-year-old Alvin Marshall of Daytona Avenue Independence City, St. Catherine, has been missing since Saturday. He is of dark complexion, slim build, and about 5 feet 5 inches tall. The Caymanas police say Marshall was last seen at home about 6.30 p.m. He was dressed in a cocky shorts and a multicolored slippers. The police say all efforts to locate him have proven futile. Anyone knowing the whereabouts of Alvin Marshall is asked to contact the Caymanas police at 876-988-1719, the 119 police emergency number, or the nearest police station. Three persons killed in Weld Street drive-by identified. The three persons who were killed in Monday afternoon's drive-by on Weld Street in East Kingston have been identified. They are 23-year-old Sabian Clark of a Winward Road address, 20-year-old Troy Dennis of a Wellington Street address, and 15-year-old Marquis Morgan. Morgan succumbed to injuries he received while undergoing treatment at hospital. Reports indicate that a Mark X motor car drove up along Wild Street. One of the occupants reportedly stepped out of the car and opened a fire on a group of people standing on the road. The condition of the second schoolboy who was injured during the attack has still not been ascertained. Sand truck overturns on Winston Jones Highway. A truck driver escaped a serious injury after the unit he was operating overturned on the Winston Jones Highway in Mandeville on Monday. Reports suggest that about 5.30 p.m., the truck, which was laden with the sand, was traveling uphill towards Mandeville when upon reaching the intersection of Hanbury Road and the highway, the vehicle developed mechanical issues, causing it to stall and descend the hill. The truck eventually overturned in bushes beyond the harder shoulder. Scores of residents converged at the scene, using bags and shovels to clear the sand. The accident happened about 200 meters from the scene of a fatal crash on Monday morning. Lawyers I release of Vibes a Cartel and Co-Accused Twelve days before the Court of Appeal is to begin hearing arguments to determine whether entertainer Vibes a Cartel and his co-accused should be retried for murder, Attorneys for the men will be seeking to have them released. The habeas corpus application, which started before the Supreme Court on Monday morning, is to continue over two days, starting on May 29. Attorneys representing Cartel, whose given name is Adija Palmer, Sean Shornstorm Campbell, and Andre Madsus St. John, filed the application almost two months after the Privy Council overturned their murder conviction. Cartel's attorney, Isa Buchanan, says that since March 14, Cartel and his co-accused have been in suspension. Mr. Buchanan says that for this reason, the attorneys filed the application seeking their release. One can appreciate that um, the liberty of the men are left um, unanswered. The men are in no man's land as it is. Um, one would call it la-la land, one would be it's a lacuna in the law where you're, you're not convicted, you're not charged, um, but you're held in abeyance. Um, I think in terms of where the law is, that the legislators would have needed to make certain amendments to account for a situation where a conviction is quashed, but the matter is not um, yet before the court. But during Monday's proceedings, Mr. Buchanan said, the application was brought before the court because of issues that the defense does not wish to disclose. The court was told that the director of public prosecutions was not served with a copy of the application, but Justice Andrea Thomas ordered that the application should be served on Monday. Justice Thomas also ordered that the application be amended by Tuesday to include the director of public prosecutions as an interested party. The office of the DPP is to respond on or before May 20. Cartel and his co-accused are being held at the Tower Street Adult Correctional Center. They, along with Kahira Jones, were convicted on March 13, 2014, for the murder of Clive Lizard Williams, but the conviction was recently overturned by the Privy Council. Mr. Jones has another matter before the court. 
Clive Williams was allegedly killed after he failed to return the two unlicensed guns given to him by cartel for safekeeping. The hearing in the Court of Appeal to determine whether or not there should be a retrial of the case is set for June 10. Jamaica not experiencing heat wave despite warm weather, says a Met service. Jamaicans have been reeling from scorching temperatures being felt across the island in recent days. But Evan Thompson, director of the Meteorological Service of Jamaica, says other elements are at play which have been intensifying what is believed to be extreme conditions. Despite what many perceive as a brutal and unbearable heat, Mr. Thompson says the country has already been rocked by higher temperatures this year. He says that Jamaica is not experiencing a heat wave. Mr. Thompson says that the recent heavy rains and the resultant humidity have caused the many to believe that the temperatures are being experienced are exceptionally high. What we experienced over the past few days in May, um, ha ha it hasn't really surpassed some of the temperatures we have seen earlier on in the year. Because even in January, we had temperatures that were higher than we have experienced so far in May. Um, last month as well, we had temperatures that were a, a little bit higher than we have experienced so far in May. And, and so we're not seeing higher temperatures now than we have seen so far in, the, in 2024. But because we've been getting a little bit of rain, the increased humidity is one of the factors that could make us feel warmer than it is actually being measured on a thermometer. Our nights are also warmer than normal. That is what has already been seen even in the state of the Jamaican climate that was done over the past few years. That is one of the things that have been reported. But we still have a disparity between nighttime and daytime temperatures that may be up to about five, four, four degrees or so. Maybe in the nighttime, temperatures may be down to about 28 degrees or 27 degrees. But as we go to the the daytime, it may go up to about 32, 33. But in each case, the temperatures are trending a little bit above what is normal. Record-breaking heat has hit several countries globally, causing That's unprecedented the setbacks. The World Meteorological Organization said in a report mm, that Latin America and the Keith Clark's widow scheduled to give testimony today after another delay. The widow of St. Andrew accountant Keith Clark, who three Jamaica Defensive Force soldiers have been accused of murdering in May 2010, is expected to start giving evidence today at the trial in the Home Circuit Court. Dr. Claudette Clark had taken the stand yesterday and was about to begin her testimony when the defense, after making inquiries about the King's Counsel Valerie Nita Robertson, informed the court that she had got sick and could not attend the day's sitting. Nita Robertson is representing one of the accused soldiers, Corporal Greg Tingling, along with attorney at law John Mark Reed. The other two defendants are Corporal Odell Buckley and the private Arnold Henry. They are each charged with murder. Peter Champagne Kisi, who is representing Buckley, told the court that Nita Robertson, who had been sick from the weekend, was making her way to court when her condition deteriorated. Champagne and Reed, who had visited Nita Robertson at her nearby office, said that based on her interaction, she would not be able to attend and asked the judge to extend the usual courtesies and delay the matter until today for her to be present. He added that the situation caught the defense by surprise and that if she is not well by today, then the defense team will be ready to proceed with the matter in her absence. While emphasizing that the prosecution and its witness are ready, Prosecutor Latoya Bernard told Justice Dale Palmer that the decision was entirely in his hands. Noting that a counsel's illness qualifies as an unforeseen situation, Palmer said although he had vowed the last week not to grant any further adjournment, barring any unforeseen circumstance, he was left with no choice but to grant the adjournment. The trial was slated to start hearing Dr. Clark's evidence from last Tuesday but was postponed until Monday after the Crown asked for an adjournment, citing challenges with the availability of the transcript for Clark's widow, Dr. Claudette Clark. The transcript is of Dr. Clark's evidence which was given at a hearing which concluded last month. The court was also told that two alternative witnesses were unable to give their testimony. The matter has been ongoing since 2012, 
when Chief Prosecutor Paul Llewellyn ruled that the three soldiers be charged for killing Clark at his home in 2010. However, the matter has been delayed due to a number of legal challenges relating to immunity certificates granted to the soldiers in 2016 by then a National Security Minister, Peter Bunting. The businessman was shot at 21 times inside his home, located on Kirkland Close in St. Andrew, on March 27, 2010, during a police military operation to apprehend the then a fugitive drug lord, Christopher Dudos Coke. Attorney at Law Linton Gordon and his son Obika are representing Henry, while attorneys at Law Leonardo Green and Nyron Wright are representing the Clark family.